everybody, it's Lori with Reiki and Wellness broadcasting from my healing space today for Wellness Wednesday. And today's topic is Reiki Level 3, Master Level, and Making Room for Our Pain. Before we get into today's topic, I want to do our Reiki Level 3 cleansing techniques, starting with an aura spray. Um, we're going to use lemon and eucalyptus spray to cleanse our energy field. Taking off anything from the day, or the week, or the month, or the season so far. And then we're going to use grapefruit oil, which is good for actually um, lifting depression and bringing happiness with orange oil. Both are really good at like boosting your energy levels. Take a deep breath. Come over your energy field, getting closer to your body or even running it down your arms. If you can touch your clothes, this gets a little bit orange, so only if you are wearing dark colors. Don't forget your feet. And just keep running it through your energy field till you feel like you've moved the heavy energy that's sticking to you. And again, I use these on myself, but also clients. And then we want to use a crystal singing bowl to work with the sound. reharmonize your energy field and then we're going to um, use the ocean drum to really scrub and rebalance our energy system so you want to start at the head and work your way down or you can start at somebody's feet and work your way up Breathe through the sound as it's moving through your chakra system. Bring it down your legs as far as you can. That's pretty refreshing, isn't it? All right, and then we're going to open up our energy field further with the Reiki symbols, starting with Shoku Rei. This is our Reiki activation symbol. And once you're attuned to this energy, you can simply think Shoku Rei, and you're activating the Shoku Rei symbol. Bring it all the way down through your chakra system, your crown, your third eye, your throat, your heart space, your sacral, your solar plexus, your sacral, your root chakra, down your legs, through your feet, and into the earth. I like to see it spinning into the earth and reaching into the center of the earth, and you can visualize it just moving. You can draw it and move it. 
And then we're going to use a couple extra um, Reiki symbols that we haven't really used a lot before. It's the Kriya, which is a Karuna Reiki symbol, and it's the double Shoku Rei. Okay, so you just want to use this to emphasize the um, activation symbol, and it also, because they face each other, will like bring in more harmony and balance, kind of like the say hey key symbol. And it's just like uh, it emphasizes the energy of the Shokure, opening us up to further divine energies. Bring it through your chakra system legs, through your feet, and into the earth. And then because we're talking about pain, I usually like to address trauma and use a trauma symbol. So this is Halu, which is also Karuna Reiki. And again, you can draw these out and, you know, like that and then bring them into an energy field or push them out or you can draw them on a card and just bring them through your energy field like I'm doing. So Halu is um, to help heal deep old trauma. Which who doesn't want to heal deep old trauma, right? Okay, lastly, we're going to work with the Duomo Reiki Master Symbol, or Duomo. Bring it down through your crown, your Soul Star Chakra your crown, your third eye, your throat chakra, your heart space, your solar plexus, your sacral, your root, down through your legs, through your feet, and into the earth. And feel it anchoring through your energy symbol into the earth. And then we call on divine light, divine love, and universal life force energy. So we say divine light is doing its perfect work in and through me now. Divine light is doing its perfect work in and through us now. Divine light is doing its perfect work in and through us now. Visualize the light permeating your energy field and your chakras and lighting up every chakra. And take it all the way down through your legs, through your feet, and into the earth. And see the light going into the earth and illuminating the earth star chakra. And feel it building out. Bring it back up your energy field and feel it illuminating the chakras as it comes back up and connects to your soul star chakra and illuminating that. And then feel it building a force field around you. This light force field around you, all around you. A multi-dimensional activated force field. And then we call on divine love and say divine love is doing its perfect work in and through me now. Divine love is doing its perfect work in and through us now. Divine love is doing its perfect work in and through us now. Bring in, breathe in all that divine loving energy into your body, into your energy field, anchoring it through your chakras, down your legs, through your feet, and into the earth. Feel it coming all the way into the earth, hitting the, soul, the earth star chakra, and then coming back up your chakra system, re-illuminating all your chakras with the vibration of love and take it back up to your soul star chakra above your head. And then feel it pushing out and building a force field around you. And then last but not least, we call on universal life force energy to come in and zigzag and cleanse, clear, reharmonize, rebalance any 
anything that's out of harmony or balance within our energy fields. You see it ping-ponging around, hitting every little spot that needs a new infusion of vibrant energy. Okay, so we're going to close that out and talk about making room for our pain. So I like to think of the Carly Simon song, I haven't got time for the pain. <laughs> and sometimes it will feel like that when you're going through something, right? You're just kind of pushing everything away and um, not dealing with the actual feeling or sensation of pain, right? So usually like a grief or a loss or a trauma or um, heartbreak, anything like that, we tend to push aside, right? Um, because we don't really want to face that stuff. But the video, we're, our topic is making room for our pain because it is important to honor our pain and give it space. Otherwise, it's going to keep like butting up against you at bad times, right? So if you don't make an appointment with it and say, okay, here we, we're going to take time to just feel our pain now and give, give it a lot of room and space, it's going to keep like nagging at you, right? So it's just going to keep like tapping you at weird times and like you won't be able to sleep sometimes. It'll hit you at weird times during the day. So it's important to make room for our pain and give ourselves time and space to honor ourselves for having gone through something or going through something. And just address it directly and just say, okay, you, you get this amount of time, do what you want. <laughs> and basically talking to your pain and working with your pain, right? So I'm personally going through an empty nest syndrome right now. Um, I just took my son to college. And for me, it's been feeling like a grief and a loss and... And it's also tripping off other losses that I've experienced. And if I get into it too much, I'll start crying. But basically, I have made an appointment for these uh, three days. I'm giving myself three days um, this week and probably like once one day a week to just be right. Just sit with the pain because it's so big for me that it needs, you know, some time, right? It needs some space. It needs to take up a place in my life and say, okay, I'm here. You need to deal with me, right? So that's what I'm um, sitting with now is this empty nest. And again, like I said, it's a grief and it's kicking off other grief um, energies that I've felt before, right? So it's time to look at all of that again and relook at everything and sit with it and just allow it to take up space and, and have a place of honor in our life. Because when you care about people and something changes, then you need to honor that there's been a change, right? So when we push past our pain and, and try to subjugate it and put it somewhere else, basically we're dishonoring the whole picture, right? So we're dishonoring that aspect of our lives and, um, you know, in our modern society, people think you should do things like that. They think you should push it down. You should push it away. Just work through it. Just get past it. Move on. You know, drink it away. Do something else, but don't face your pain. Don't sit with your pain, right? So we don't sit with our pain long enough, I think. And when we don't do that, then it's just going to keep coming back. It can come back for years and years and years if you don't give it enough time up front, right? So I've learned the hard way, trust me, very much the hard way, to just simply give it some time and make appointments with myself to sit with my pain, right? And um, it doesn't always occur to me in the beginning. So... What I actually did this week is I scheduled myself for extra days of work and um, initially I didn't, you know, sit with the pain. So I kind of like went into work mode and then, but I did say after that, I'm going to give myself the time. So I am honoring my word, but initially I went into like work mode, which is my default mode when I don't want to deal with things. So I'll work extra hard or I'll distract myself with busyness. And um, that's, you know, how I process things when I don't want to feel it or I don't want to deal with it, right? So that is my usual go-to, but I also did 
say this is a big deal you need to make time and space for yourself um, this week and just kind of like consistently have some moments where you honor this but I just kind of wanted to give myself three days this week and see how much more I might need or how much I don't need right so what happens is when you're willing to go into the pain and face it directly right so you're going into it and you're meeting it where it is Sometimes you find it's not that bad, right? So the the tension is in the fear of it, right? So once you get up to it, it might be bad. It, you, you have to be brave enough to say, okay, whatever it is, it is. I'll face it. But once you get up to it, just meeting yourself, yourself, your, your soul, your heart, your emotions, your energy field starts to relax, right? So when you say, okay, I'm going to give you time and space, whatever you need, just being there for yourself meets a big need of being seen and heard to yourself, right? Being witnessed by yourself to say, okay, you can do what you want. I'll be here. I'm going to give you everything you need make yourself comfortable, <laughs> do what we need to do. Um, like I was laying around the other day, um, then I started like organizing some things. I'm just like, whatever, what do we need to do? We just need to hang out and do whatever, you know, starts intuitively coming up. And, um, but when you do that for yourself, you relax, right? Your soul relaxes, your emotions relax and and you feel more comforted and therefore the pain isn't as intense, right? Because you, you're, you're doing what you need to do for yourself. So like if you had a car accident and you were, you know, <clears throat> in a bad car accident and you were laying in the hospital and if the hospital kicks you out too soon, there's going to be so much resistance from your, your body, your mind, your spirit, your emotions, of saying, no, I'm not ready to go home yet. I can't take care of all that needs to be taken care of when I get there, right? You need to be in a safe environment where people are helping you until you're ready to help yourself, right? So our emotional pain is exactly the same way. We have to give ourselves the time, the space, the care, anything we need, you know, during those moments to feel better and when we do that, we actually, that is, we begin the healing process, right? So that initiates the healing process when we meet ourselves in our pain. When we agree to give ourselves the time, to give ourselves the space, to give ourselves the care that we require because we're going through something, right? And we have to take time to honor that. So whether you take it off of work or you take it away from family and friends, However, you need to take that time and space. It's just very important that you do because it will initiate your healing process. And then you can just nip at it as needed, right? So as needed. So like if you leave the hospital, once you leave the hospital, the idea is you have initiated the recovery. The wounds have been, you know, cleansed and bandaged and the bones are set and things are like situated enough that when you go home, you just continue the healing process, right? So that's what we have to do for our hearts and our spirits and our emotions when we're going through something difficult that doesn't, you know, maybe have all the scar tissue on the outside, but on the inside, we're feeling something, right? We're going through something. Um, so that's up to us to acknowledge and that's up to us to take the time and create the space for ourselves because no one else is going to realize that. And even if they do, they're probably maybe not mentally there and emotionally there with you to say, oh my gosh, let's step aside. Let's take some time, take all the time you need. Sometimes you get, um, you know, a period of, um, bereavement time when you, or at work, they'll give you a few days, but what is a few days in, in a bereavement period? It's hardly anything. It's like just enough to get through like the nitty gritty of what you have to do, but the road to recovery is much, much longer, right? So the road to recovery requires you to set aside time every day, a little bit of time every day, a little bit of time every week until you feel 
like yourself again, right? So to adjust and adapt to the, the change of the loss. So that takes ongoing maintenance and not everybody does address it directly. So what happens is they start going into like avoidance mode and they start avoiding all the, the pain and the, the grief and the whatever they're feeling and the anger, the depression, whatever comes up. And then they um, start, you know, having other issues, right? They maybe work too hard or they drink too much or they take extra pills or however they handle their grief through these other avenues, right? So they aren't allowing themselves the healing and giving themselves the time and the space. And then that can trail with them for a while, right? So if you've ever gone through anything really, really challenging, it's probably going to be a combination of a few things, right? So some of it, you might want to have some drinks. Some of it, you might want to just cry. Some of it, you might want to just be around people. Some of it, you might want to be alone, whatever. But you just have to give yourself what you need in the moment, right? So in those moments, you have to say, okay, I'm here for you. What do we need to do? What's going to help you right now? How can I meet your needs? And really have like an internal conversation with yourself, right? So like yesterday, I was just kind of like twiddling my thumbs almost like, what am I going to do right now? Like, I usually don't have a problem filling a day, but I made myself like just stay home and do nothing, right? I made myself just like literally don't do that much, right? So then I was like, okay, now I'm going to handle this. And so I just found myself like puttering around, honestly, and just like, kind of like weaving through different rooms and kind of figuring out like, all right, what do I want to do? I don't really want to do too much yet. You know, I just kind of want to look around and maybe clean a little bit, but not overdo it. Like I didn't want to go into work mode exactly because I know that's my avoidance um, path. So it was, it was challenging the first day to just say, okay, I'm just going to do whatever I have all day to do whatever. So, and just, you know, things would come or I would just go watch some TV or whatever. I mean, I didn't do a lot, right? So that's the point. But I just kind of sat with the energy and, and just allowed myself to feel it. And then today I woke up feeling a little bit better and I did more of that and, you know, changed it up a little bit. And here, here I am recording a video even because I knew that would actually make me feel better. And, um, and then I have tomorrow where I'm going to give myself another day and, you know, see what that brings. Right. But I'm just not attaching any like to do list to it or any goals or any ambitions. I'm just saying, okay, take the space, take the time, feel it out, sit with it. And, and it is uncomfortable. Like it's an uncomfortable process to do that, but I know by the third day, at least, I'm going to feel like that much better and I will have initiated the healing process and I will feel like mentally more situated, right? So um, that is really crucial and really important. So if you're going through anything, like, please give yourself the time and space and don't say you don't have time or you can't take the time. You can always run to the store, right? You can always go to a park. You can always... Um, you know, say you're going somewhere and just go sit in a park. You can always just go sit in your car somewhere. You don't have to be present to other people when you're going through something hard, you know. So giving yourself any kind of time and space is very important. And you can usually duck out and give yourself 30 minutes somewhere, right? And just keep, give yourself that appointment like every single day. That adds up, right? 30 minutes a day adds up that you just gave to yourself to be kind and nice and careful and considerate towards yourself, right? And to say, okay, I'm not taking on any other energy except this because I need it. And just carve that out for yourself and then, you know, figure out what else you can take where else you can take it from and and start stealing some time away from all the duties and all the responsibilities that you carry and see how you can you know just step out for a little bit and even just a few minutes when you step outside literally will calm you down right just having the appointment with yourself calms you down just saying okay 
You're going to give yourself 10 minutes to just breathe the air and look at the birds and just kind of like do nothing. Just like tune into yourself. And you don't have to make a job of it. Just say, okay, I'm just going to give you a little TLC for 10 minutes. We're going to go do this one thing and, and do that and set, keep your appointment to yourself, right? Because that will give you doses of healing energy as you go forward. The bigger things are the bigger things. You can go do whatever you need to do, extra therapy or whatever, but you have to start making room and time to honor your pain. And when you do that, you actually shorten your um, healing process, right? So I have found personally, the more directly I can face something, the faster it moves. The more I avoid something, the slower it moves. So if you find anything slowing down in your life, you must be avoiding something that you don't wanna deal with. And if you find things are moving quickly, it's because you're dealing with it more directly, right? So that's personally what I found. And I've had to go through several different recoveries and several different healing processes, right? So take it from me, it works. Um, but facing it, dealing with it, spending some time with just allowing it to be and let it like start to talk to you, let it show you things, let it take you, you know, on a little adventure. Like I just went on a little adventure in my house yesterday and just like opened up different drawers and cabinets I haven't looked at in a while. And, you know, and just kind of reconnecting to my home and just like, there's all this like good energy when you do that. And like, you know, kind of like re-identifying things, re considering what I want to keep, what I don't want to keep, what I want to let go of. And then it's just like, you know, part of the process, right? You're going through a transition, you're going through a change. You do have to look at things. You do have to let some things go. You do have to sort, you do have to consider, you do have to organize, you do have to get into a new mode, right? You do have to, um, you know, let some stuff go so you, new stuff can come in and, you know, just kind of working with that process. So every time we make a transition or something is transitioning for us, that's an opportunity for new things to come in, but it is a process. The grief is the process of letting go of the old energy so you can bring in new, fresh energy and have a new, fresh perspective on it when it's all said and done, right? So that's the idea. It's not there to, to do you in, right? It's just there to freshen up the old energy. So now one thing is done and now a new thing can happen, right? And, and all of the tra changes and transitions in life can be very beautiful if you allow them to be and allow them to show you what is next, right? So flowing with the changes, flowing with the energy and and redefining your life at different stages. It's, it's very interesting. And if you get to live long enough and see it through, you know, all, all of the stages, that would be such a gift, right? But wherever we are, we just have to be present to that and be mindful and considerate and give ourselves the, the love and the care that we deserve because our life you know, is complicated and it's important to go ahead and like give yourself a little TLC and a little care, especially if you're going through anything big, anything very transitional, you know, any kind of move is very big and very disruptive and transitional, even if it's intentional, even if you want to do it, but you're out of sorts for a while and you have to sit with that energy and kind of feel it out and, and like, get into what is the new normal, right? So we're not going to get into all of that today, but we're just going to kind of close it out there. But making room for our pain is the first step in healing. And it's the first step on the, the road to recovery. It's the first step of writing that new chapter, right? So that's what we need to do is just sit with ourselves and make room for the pain and make the time for the pain. And then the pain won't be as intense and it won't be as disruptive because you've set some time aside and your inner child or whatever part of you needs that is going to be very happy to wait until your appointment. But make sure you keep your appointment with yourself because you're 
that important. You need to have your appointments and you need to keep your, keep your, your word to yourself that you're going to do it. All right. That's the message for today. We're going to close this energy out and we're going to use the Tibetan chimes. Okay, thank you for joining me for Wellness Wednesday. Thank you for everyone who keeps um, liking and subscribing and interacting with the channel. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Take care.